am. It's uh, June 11th, 2020. Uh. And uh, this vid is about an audio chat, uh, audio commentary is about um, faggy fag origins. And uh, I say to myself, what's the verboten thing that will get you uh, quickly shit canned on Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitter to a lesser extent, but still occasion sometimes. Uh, Google's blogger less, but they did delete 14 years worth of Bosch Faustin's post on blogger, ex-Muslim cartoonist Bosch Faustin. So the left hates culture. But in any case, uh, or free, and free speech and free thought. Um, in any case, the verboten thoughts that go against uh, post-modernist dogma. So faggy fag origins is, a, is one of those items. Faggy fag origi origins. So, in my own case, uh, back when I was a ex, when I was a noob ex-Mormon, um, I came across this book by Bruce Begamel, and it's kind of a thick book about examples of uh, faggy fag activities in non-human animals, and this book is. Uh, just a list, and then it's essentially uh, a justification by action without explanation, or without a reasonable expl expl explanation. So, uh, and then there's this matter of, uh, you know, from the uh, from the uh, the dumb shit Stonewall riots uh, forward, or you know thereabouts, the what the 60s, 70s, whatnot. There were uh, 80s, 90s. There was this uh, claim that like like there's a gay gene. It's all in the genes. It's a gene that drives people to want to be faggy fags, and so therefore you should uh, tr you should uh, treat faggy fag activities legally in a legal sense to be legally equ equivalent to uh regular activities normal activities uh, forcibly com uh jammed cram jammed in uh, to be accepted and use the same words as inherently reproductive activities, you know, forced, jammed in there. And the, the underlying basis for that jamming was this claim that it's all about genes, okay, born that way. Now... All this stuff, what I've just gone through, is an example of a few things. One, lazy thinking. Lazy thinking. Two, not examining the what how evolution works. Uh, three, not exa examining how the sexual drive works with any evolved animals. So sexual animals have an incredibly strong drive to have sex. And the word, the, the two words have sex means that you use your, you find an, an opposite or sex 
opposite gender partner as a same species animal to engage in uh, an interaction between the genitalia of the two animal op opposite sex animals. That's the drive, right? Why is that drive there? It's there for evolutionary reasons. Because you have this, uh, you know, you have this, uh, uh, let's see here. You have this uh, machinery set up uh, to, uh, that drives you to um, produce life. And so it's there for evolutionary reasons. Uh, if it weren't, if we, if there, if the drive wasn't there, then you and I wouldn't exist. Okay. So think of it like a waterfall or uh, a hose uh, nozzle, it's, uh, a fireman's hose. It's a, sp a spray, evolutionary spray that's aiming toward the continuance of life. That's what it's aiming toward. But when you have a train going down the track or water spray coming out of a nozzle, you can have side tracks, you can have side spray. So, there's that. Now, uh, and so from my perspective and theory, and a theory can be proven by examining data and being reasonable and putting your confirmation bias aside and your emotional ties to retrograde tribalism aside. Um, so from my perspective, uh, the, uh, the faggy fag element in humans and in other animals is a sideshow, a side spray, side spray, sideshow. It's not, it's an activity that's not selected for by our natures, by evolution. It's a result of a natural process, the side spray, but also because just because a side spray doesn't mean there's genes that code for it, okay? It's just like you're an animal who has this drive and the main route, the main evolution, human nature intended route is not available. And so uh, you're driven into a sideshow. Now we do have these things on our heads called brains. And we have these things in our brains called idea sets, uh, called me, well, <coughs> also meme sets. <coughs> meme being a word just for a an idea or a concept. So, a meme, sets of memes, you have ideas running in your brain. And we are animals that do need to be socialized. Lots of socialization and education. So, as a ex-Mormon, noob ex-Mormon, I held up, or I went to a protest at Temple Square, and the Mormon Temple Square, and it was with the people who were upset about the Mormon church's approach on uh, faggy fag marriage. Now, uh, and um, I was engaging my, in my own separate protest, which I had a permit for. 
but I decided to uh, because they were there and I was still a leftist, social, social leftist then. I decided, well, you know what? I'm going to see if I can stand with my Bruce Begamel book that uh, and uh, hold it up and uh, show that um, you know we need to teach these people that there's uh, non-human animals that engage in this activity. And boy, howdy, that's going to be useful. But at the time, I was also about 350 pounds. And, you know, I wasn't exactly the best prospect myself, you could say. But I had no desire to be a faggy fag myself. I like women. I like women then, I like women now, I like women now. But, like I said, if, as, a, as a leftist at the time, social leftist, you're on board with the whole uh, project of so-called gay marriage. Whereas now I think that gay marriage is not even a thing. Um, and so, anyway, that book... Uh, is there the Bruce Begamel? But it, like, like I say, it's a <sighs> past two runners already. Um, yeah, so there's that book, but it's a fallacy to just assume that just because it happens to, that that means it's like selected for when it can be. So uh, so there's that. But also um, in a previous vid and also elsewhere on my blog, I've talked about how there's this group, atheist group in Utah called Atheists of Utah. And it's when I first encountered Atheists of Utah... It was run by a man, Ross Anderson, uh, who had a pro-life atheist girlfriend. And he actually had a kid with that pro-life atheist girlfriend. And then I also talked about previously how there was a prospect for a merger between Atheists of Utah and Salt Lake Valley Atheists. And Salt Lake Valley Atheists being a bunch of largely Unitarian Universalist old, old fogies. Um, rejected the prospect of a merger um, because of the man, this atheist of Utah, Ross Anderson's pro-life atheist girlfriend who he had a kid with later. He had a kid with a little bit later with her. So it's interesting, right? Um, and so, uh, but anyway, uh, this atheist of Utah guy he made the mistake of reaching out during the Salt Lake Pride event. That's where bunches of uh, overly attractive males and uh, corpulent pig, orange-haired, nose-ringed females joined together uh, to um, have their uh, uh, shirts off and just wear bras and do pride, so-called pride-type activities. Okay? So he reached out during that event. And so the result of that action was that within about two years uh, after Mr. Anderson decided to leave Utah for Reno, um, uh, two years, so some odd, um, Atheists of Utah completely changed into a regular kind of atheist club. They changed from a regular atheist club with 
you know, your average ratio of normies to faggy fags, like, what is it, 98% to 2% or 99.9% to 0.01% or something, that ratio to, instead, 98% uh, or, you know, 90 to 98% faggy fag to 10 to 2% no, normal. Um, and so, uh, during the transition phase, I went to, uh, they had, uh, Atheists of Utah had uh, coffee chats at uh, Mestizo's Coffee House. Um, and I will say that the history of the coffee chats with, Ace, with Ace of U- Atheists of Utah um, had a longer history, uh, even before Atheists of Utah got connected to it. Um, there was other atheist coffee chats that would happen um, in Salt Lake and um, at other places. And then they glommed on to uh, a meetup, a coffee chat meetup. They took it over, kind of hijacked it and used it. So I probably was, you know, as an attendee of this weekly coffee chat, was really one of the longest attendees. And the coffee chats had a history of being a place where you could go there and just freely talk about anything. Okay. And that was nice. But still, there was a strong preference toward leftism and socialism. But in theory, you could go there as a non-leftist and speak your mind. Although the people might would probably become more upset with you by uh, diverging from the leftist dogma and doctrines. Um, so anyway, uh, as the during the transition phase between a normal atheist club and an, and a faggy fag focused atheist club, um, the uh, the coffee chat was there there with. Uh, I think I was there with my wife, but um, anyway, there was this lesbian woman who said, uh, in a in a derogatory, derision type tone, um, you know, something about something like, "What about those, those fucking breeders, fucking breeders?" She used the term, and think think to yourself, what type of a phrase that is. Uh, fucking breeders. And she was a foul-mouthed, ignorant um, bitch. Let's call her that. Why not? Foul-mouthed, ignorant lesbo. Anti-life lesbo. Um, And that type of a phrase is like, you know, what about the fucking breeders that produced you, you ignorant dumbass? So, um, there was that experience. Then also, uh, I, you know, had my first son born, and I, um, my first, uh, son was, uh, was around and um, so I wanted to go with my wife and my son to an atheist a party that was being organized by the club Atheists of Utah and then I was told by the party organizers that it was not a party where children could be now and these was basically a bunch of pig lesbians giving this response. Uh, so that was a shock to me. Now in the Ross Anderson days of Atheists of Utah, a, a normal guy with who likes women, P- 
people like me, who's, who are also normal, who like women and who may have children, were welcome at parties organized by the club. I remember those parties. I remember going to several of those parties. Nice potluck parties. Fun. But when Atheists of Utah got hijacked and taken over by the death cult faggy fag pride people, um, norm, normal people like me were not welcome. The inherently reproductive were not welcome. Not at all. Uh, any evidence of the fact that reproduction actually exists in the human animal, not welcome. Okay? And by a similar token, at the other, at a older group, Salt Lake Valley Atheists, I remember bringing my son there, and I was the only one, mostly, who brought his kid to this group of largely old, fogey, Unitarian Universalists. And I remember during one talk, the, my son was making a little noise, and then this guy, who's a professor at the uh, University of Utah, um, he was he got upset that my son was making a little noise, and you know, so essentially, kind of got treated like shit because I brought my son to this other atheist club. So. It's another example of how leftists don't like evidence that shows that humans are an inherently reproductive species. They don't. And the proof is in the pudding. So, you examine the situation on the ground with many regular and some like buff and over, over, you know, attractive males who have been prepared by evolution for what? What have these men been prepared for? Well, they've been prepared to find a wife and have babies. That's what they've been prepared for. That's their 1.2 billion year heritage. That's what they've been prepared for. But where, what are their available mate choices? Well, meanwhile, we have this bad, abusive, denialist meme set of postmodernism running in people's brains that denies a whole slew of things about evolved human nature, ingrained human nature. The, mar the downstream effect of another aspect is the downstream effect of Margaret Sanger's racist eugenicist Margaret Singer's birth control pill, which I agree with Jordan Peterson's comments about it being essentially kind of like a nuclear bomb type impact <coughs> upon the human project because it essentially teaches people the lie that sex is for anything other than making children. So you can have a sexual partner or you can have a wank partner. A sexual partner is someone who you can have children with. A wank partner is someone who you can't have children with because wankery does cannot produce children. Okay? So, the dogma of the San Fran elitists 
who will shit can you for speaking the truth is that we must agree to change the definition of the word sex to mean something it does not nor cannot mean. Wankery isn't sex. A wank partner is not a sexual partner. Okay? Also, this business of having women uh, separated from their evolved path as mothers. Mothers who are in us, there in the human animal, are the primary caregivers and takers care of children born. The men defend the home. The women keep the home. The men defend the house and the women raise the children. The, now the father helps educate the children too and they're a key role, key and irreplaceable, uh, non-replaceable non partner in the home. But feminism lies to women about their own natures. And feminism is a downstream effect of postmodernism. So women get lied to about their natures. Racist eugenicist Margaret Sanger's birth control pill separates the activities of people's sexual organs from the what natural results from those organs. Um, so you have a group of women who have been lied to, lied to themselves. They lie to themselves and they are lied to and they lie to others about their about human nature and about female nature and about male nature. Okay? And about when, what can be changed and what cannot be changed in human nature. Okay? How about human, how humans are a sexually dimorphic species? They deny that. So you have women who are lied to. And you have a separation of sexual acti of activities with one's sexual organs from the, 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 what that activity historically for just, oh, just one point, just only 1.2 billion years, just a 1.2 billion year, year history versus, uh, what, 30, 30 to 40 years of extreme faggy phagism. You know, let's just put the balance those two up against what, which one has a stronger weight. 1.2 billion versus 40 years of dumb shittery. Okay. Um, so I go with the 1.2 billion instead of the dumb shittery. I go with the, the, the 1.2 billions on the scale. So, you know, for when, so you have this strong drive and then, so what, what, what are people going to supposed to do when they've been lied to and they lie to themselves by bad memes? The me and so what, what, what are they going to do with the, what's, what's the sexual drive, the spray going to result in? Well, it's going to result in what we see. Men hooking up with other men. Women, the, 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 the corpulent pig, orange-haired, nose-ringed women hooking up with other women. Um, and as per Antifa and, you know, similar groups like... Uh, uh, what was it? Uh, Brett Weins Weinstein's Weinstein's uh, Weinstein's uh, ex experience at Evergreen College with being tossed out by these f freaks violently. So they're angry. They're upset. Um, and there's a vid where uh, Ben Shapiro was on a talk show with some tranny freak guy, uh, man to man to supposed man to supposed woman freak show and Penn Shapiro is expressing his opinion about the situation and then the tranny freak uh, biological male butchered male uh, wants to essentially physically attack Mr. Shapiro that's just a micro example but goodness leftists are violent 
and they're upset. Why? Because they've lied to and they lied to themselves about their own natures. Lies hurt. Denialism hurts. So, how to be happy in your life? We be, can be happy by doing activities that most closely comport with or match up with our evolved heritage as inherently reproductive uh, sexual animals. And the word sex is always linked to inherent reproduction. If it's not that, then it's wankery. So there's only one type of marriage because there's only one type of sex. Inherently reproductive. So is that too much? Or what, you know? If I was on Facebook or YouTube, I am still on YouTube, but I'm also on BitChute because YouTube is a is a censorious shithole now. You get the you get the shit can for speaking the truth. So I feel sorry for the people, the, the kids who are sucked away into this dead end waste of a life. And yes, it's true that some uh, faggy fags do live service-oriented lives. But, you know, I, I wish and I hope, my hope is, is that these people will see and that everyone will see how um, how we should uh, what our evolved purpose is here evolved purpose the 1.2 billion year history versus the denialism of postmodernism the denialism of leftism examine the true situation what, what's the where the weight is so you know, if you eat organic food from whole foods munch on a gun of carrots then you should try to live your life uh, in a way which is most natural for humans and that's with a man and wife couple with children and if you have bad memes that have sucked you away then try to free yourself from bad memes. There can be bad religious memes and cults, bad secular memes and cults, meme sets, bad meme sets, lies. So that's it. All right, choose life. It's uh, June 13th, 2020. Um, as an addendum <clears throat> uh, on uh, faggy fag and add in tranny freak origins, um, it's a combination of a lack of available made choices because of the lies of postmodernism and the lies of leftism. Uh, it's the downstream effect of racist eugenicist Margaret Sanger's birth control pill. And I think it's much less genes. The only gene involvement really is the fact that we're coded to have sex. We're coded to reproduce. We're coded. We're coded to uh, have children. That's the only thing it can be coded for by genes. You can have defects, but defects are a lot less common, especially with regard to the trending freak variety. Um, there's utter lies in the, in the current cultural left about the prevalence of the trending freak defect, the true trending freak defect, which is m much, much lower, magnitudes lower than the current expression. And this, the current expression is all about bad memes. So memes can hijack your brain. 
Uh, yeah, religions do some hijacking, but religions also couch evolved morality. Um, so religions have some evolutionary benefit and benefit to human continuance and human thriving even because they've had time uh, to evolve and have evolutionary forces act within them. Certainly not all of them are good or equal with regard to cost versus benefit. But, it, but religions, at least in general and almost universally, they value the continuance of life. Why do they do that? For, for evolutionary reasons. So, uh, so yeah, I, I really almost don't care about the fact of, about the debate between God versus no God. It's irrelevant because functionally when people believe in a God, there are act, there's a, there's real results for that belief. And those results come from evolution and human nature type of activities. But in any case, um, you can either live your life where you comport your activities with our evolved human nature as 1.2 billion year evolved human animals. And I keep saying 1.2 billion because that's the time sex has existed on this planet. Yeah, the planet was around for longer, the universe was around for longer, but 1.2 billion is about the time sex existed on this planet. So you can comport your life with uh, that history and heritage and be most happy. Or you can uh, be caught into a dead-end cul-de-sac. So, anyway, that's it for my addendum. <laughs>